All right, guys. What's going on, Justin? What's going on, Steve? How are you? What's going on, man? Good, good. So, guys, we're here to uh, to give a little bit behind more scenes of like how it is to be a coach and so forth. For those who are watching this, Justin is an IFBB pro on a classic uh, physique side, um, soon to be Mr. Olympia, right, Justin? That's a goal. <laughs> and then yeah, Steve. <laughs> And then Steve, national level competitor, man, high high end level coach, tons of clients. Um, both are out of the South Jersey area, like that way. So I kind of wanted to kick it off just so people kind of know the background of each of you guys before we kind of get into everything. So Jay, since you're like in the top left right now, um, like because you're relatively long, young man. When did you like? What are you? Twenty two, twenty three. <laughs> no, no, I'm 26. <laughs> 26. When, uh, <laughs> Come on, when, look at his beard, man. Come on. Yeah, that you put the beard on, so you look 26. I don't, even, don't even start that, Justin. <laughs> I, I stole from Steve. Steve, yeah, Steve gave you a little bit because Steve, like, <laughs> he shaves right now, and two days later, he has a full-grown fucking beard. This is like a month and a half or so. <laughs> it's, 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 it's whack. Yeah, about 26. 26. Gotcha. So, um. The most important part is we all get into bodybuilding and out of something, right? Like I got into bodybuilding because I wanted, because I wanted to look like Vin Diesel and The Rock, right? And I was like my initial wanting to go to the gym. Like, what got you into the whole lifestyle, and then you know, kind of moving forward? Yeah, yeah. So I, I've talked about this on some other like pop podcasts and publicly, but obviously, you know, people seeing this might not know. I was very competitive with ice hockey before I got into bodybuilding. I was an ice hockey goalie and I actually had um, some opportunity to play division one and to play for some high level junior teams um, during my like junior senior year of high school. Um, so 16, 17 years old, my first year out of high school, I was still playing hockey. Um, I didn't go to college that year because I was like in my final year. You could play like one year of travel hockey post high school and then you kind of had to make up the decision. And I had an opportunity, uh, but I kind of blew it snowboarding because I was uh, I was really into snowboarding at the time as well. And I was I was really good at snowboarding as well. Um, so it wasn't like I was, it was just some, uh, you know, I went went away to have fun, you know, and I, I messed myself up like I was I was relatively good. And I, I did I did injure myself and I was bed rest for like four months. I actually displaced my pelvis. I mean, I couldn't walk. That's something a lot of people might not know. And um, during that time, I really didn't want to go play hockey again. Like I kind of fell out of love with hockey because I was kind of not necessarily, I, I love a team effort and a team vibe. Like we talk, like we're on Aries team, you know, me and Steve coach people together. It's a team yep. effort. Right. Um, but at the time for bodybuilding, I felt, you know, being a goalie, if the other, if your other teammates for defense didn't work hard, it would come back on the goal. You're letting in the goals, your stats would look bad and whatnot. And it didn't reflect my hard work outside of being a goaltender. Um, so during that time, I was watching some YouTube and I came across like Jay Cutler. I came across some Dorian stuff. I actually came across, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. Uh, he was like a men's physique guy back in the day. His name was Jeff side. He was yep. pretty popular. You yeah. Got, yeah. Yeah. So I was just watching their stuff. And when I, um, when I was not bed rest anymore, I decided to kind of go forward with like lifting and a year and a half later, I competed at my very first show and kind of, you know, it's been a, it's been one hell of a ride since then, you know? Yeah. Now, before I ask you how I got into like uh, posing coaching, dude, if you lived in California, you wouldn't be ice skating. You'd be probably surfing, dude. Probably. I could yeah, definitely probably. see you being a surfer. Yeah. <laughs> hockey conditioned me to be more of a cold guy though. So actually like, it's a fun fact. Like I don't really like summer. I don't really like the beach. I mean, I like the beach cause it's pretty. Like I like scenic stuff, yeah. you know? Um, but I'm not really a big heat temperature guy. I would yeah, love yeah. to be like freezing outside, um, mm -hmm. you know, with my toes pretty much having like frostbite versus okay. uh, being sweating too much to give you the analogy of what I prefer temperature wise. So you're one of the guys that wear shorts outside during winter. I would probably, <laughs> yeah, 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 I probably, I probably would. Yeah. All right. So, um, that fast forward, you were competing, you went national, of course you went pro, you did a few pro shows already. You placed in a top four, top three, you know, your career keeps moving forward. At what point did you feel like you wanted to do more and give back, um, to other individuals, like which turned into posing coach, coach, posing, coaching? Yeah. So, you know, 
there was a big life of coaching before posing, to be honest with you. I, I actually, before I did my first show, if you, if, you know, if we kind of go back a little bit, my last year um, playing hockey out when I wasn't in college, I, um, you know, the next year I went to college, I went to community college studying exercise science. And my main thing, and, and I remember my first semester was pretty much the year I did my first show. So actually mm-hmm. a couple of weeks into the semester, I did my first show. And I went for exercise science because I just wanted to kind of learn more and be able, I, my goal was like to be a personal trainer, to, um, to do more of like in-person training at the time, because I was really unfamiliar with the industry, unfamiliar with the online coaching world, unfamiliar with the posing world. And I'm just a beginner in bodybuilding, not knowing what, what I was really doing. I even like prepped myself for my first show. I had no idea what I was doing. I linked up with my, my coach after my first show. And, um, you know, during that time, like my only goal was in-person training and eventually it evolved to like becoming a personal trainer at a gym working at supplement stores you know i worked at gnc and vitamin shop before mm-hmm. aries you know um you know i i did online coaching for lifestyle clients after um after in-person training and then posing probably started after my pro debut after i okay. did my first pro show i felt confident enough to kind of bring on some athletes for posing and that's kind of roughly around the time so back in like 2020 the end of 2020 i started to to build a a posing portfolio portfolio um for all my you know for all my male posing clients so that's kind of when that started and that's been just like revved up ever since um it's been it's been awesome posing people for sure gotcha and then for you steve you uh you know you went through your regular you know just like amateur you've been going through a national side how long you've been coaching now like full time, basically, as your career. Because, well, let me ask you this: When did you be actually start coaching full time and decide to just leave the regular human world and hide in the forest? <laughs> so, so uh, I tore my bicep. I was getting ready for Junior USA's in 2019. I was seven weeks out. I tore my bicep. So, um, you know that that was tough, and I was like in a depression in a rut. And then at like three, four weeks out, the school was like, they put me on, you know, disability, all that. And then at that point I was already working in a school district for, you know, with children with disabilities and such for like three years. I enjoyed that. And it started to get to me mentally though, because they had me do a lot of the restraints and such. And, you know, at some point it's a lot, you know, mentally and physically. So I started to get to that, that point where I'm like, you know, maybe I want to start helping people do their diet and such. Like I was helping some people on the side for free. Mm-hmm. You know, they would ask me for help. How can I look like you, et cetera. And I would just help them. And then I took on somebody and he started paying me. He wanted to compete and I already knew him for a few years. And then that was in 2019. I got my logo made up my LLC in July or August that year. Uh-huh. And then I just started like post posting up stuff on you know instagram like online coaching looking for people and it didn't really like take off like it is like i am now um probably until like right after covid like Mm -hmm. all the gyms reopened in september october whatever 2020 but i'd say like from 2019 in the summer when i started like like i said my logo my llc and started like promoting online like i said you know maybe i had like I don't know, 20, 25 clients, 30, maybe I think max. Um, and then COVID hit in March of 2020 and I only had like 10. And then yeah. after COVID hit, it started to pick up again. And then, you know, now I'm at a point where I cap clients. Like I cap my workload at a certain point. Yeah. And I just, I just have like a waiting list now at this point. Good. Good for you. You ever um, thought of expanding? like your, your brand and adding coaches in so you can, basically- yeah. So that's actually our already in the works, um, with, with two females. Um, the only thing is with that, it's like from a legal perspective, uh, you know, I have to make sure that somebody contacts me, inquires, fills out a coaching application. They have to be okay with their information, their photos, some medical history that I obviously they have to share with like medications, injuries, things, mm-hmm. surgeries, things like that. It has to be legally okay with them to be passed on to an assistant coach. So right now I'm finding like that medium balance of, Hey, I know you inquired to work with me, 
But right now I'm capped out with where I draw the line yeah. with quantity of clients. Yep. And it's a lot of people are like, no, I want to work with you. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I get that. And then I just put their name on a list. So, you know, I get, you know, so that's kind of like where I'm at, you know, so I want to make sure I do, I try and make sure I do everything the proper way. Mm -hmm. So with the two females who I have brought on as assistant coaches, as soon as like people are like, yeah, that's okay with me. I'll have, you know, have set up a zoom call or a phone call with, with them and, and mm -hmm. the, the individual and get them under, under the, that person. But um, right now that's just like kind of the, the roadblock I'm hitting with the assistant coaches. So gotcha. like I said, I, I was at one point up to 155 people and mm -hmm. it was just, it was way, way too much. I was working 16 hours a day. Yep. I couldn't even train for 90 minutes without my phone going off. Yep. So, you know, people started dropping off. It kind of handled itself. So now, like I said, I capped myself at 120 people and I won't go over that because mm -hmm. I need to make sure I have time for the wife and just time to dewind and not stare at a computer or a phone. Um, but yeah, I, man, I, I mean, I'm in, I, I'm thankful for the the position I'm in and I love doing it. So I, I, I can't complain. Um, but yeah, like you said, with the expansion thing, it's, I'm already in the works. It's just hard getting people to agree to not want to work with me because they inquired, mm -hmm. let's pass you to the assistant coach. So that's where I'm at with that. But yeah, man, I should have, I should have had assistant coaches a year ago, but I, I started getting to that burnout spot, you know, where I'm like, this phone is going to just probably blow up if it goes off anymore. Yeah. I mean, we all, we all feel like we just keep doing more and more and more. Yeah. Um, that's just normal. That's just the yeah. hunger from us. Yeah. Um, now, when did you, cause you and Justin now, how does this work? Cause you guys have linked up together. You hold posing clinics and so forth. Um, how does that work? Like, does your clients go through Justin or how do you guys operate? So, so me and Justin have been close for, yeah. I mean, many years, like back when like Justin, before he even did his first show. So it's been like six, seven, eight years. It's been a good amount of time. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the more clients I started getting like this past year, year and a half that wanted to compete, um, you know, obviously I'm not a posing coach. I'll never say I am, you know, mm -hmm. I just don't have the eye for that. And so I'll, I just refer to Justin for that. So I'll send my clients to him for the posing. Um, and then that's obviously between him and him and them, um, and whatnot. And, uh, and vice versa, if there's somebody like that needs prep or whatever, and he, he doesn't take them on. He'll, he'll send them to me and, and whatever, but you know, we get along great. We talk all the time, just not even by doing just about life and, and yeah. bullshit in general. Um, I mean, like I said, we, we got a good friendship and stuff. And I mean, he supposing is great with the, with the advice and stuff he gives. And Steve's um, naming his daughter after me. He's naming it Justine. Wow. <laughs> that's, how, that's how close we are. That's a, that's extremely close. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's, he's kidding. He's kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how it works. So like with the posing clinics though, Pat, so um, one of our good buddies, Umar, he, he has the asylum recovery clinic. Yes. Um, and he's a, he's a very close friend of both of ours. And um, I just, I had 17 people doing this show Saturday, big cat. That's so I was like, listen, I was like, let's, can I, invite everybody here i told him and mm -hmm. let let me just see everybody in person there's 17 people let let's get everybody together i mean i got a girl coming from south carolina competing i got a, a bodybuilder in buffalo coming down so let me get everybody together for a few hours on a sunday i said it was like yeah cool whatever we didn't know how the hell this thing was going to go so I pulled and that two, wasn't like planned. Just I it mean, wasn't it wasn't, planned. Like, a, it wasn't yeah. like a posing clinic that we. No, it wasn't at all. It was yeah. just for me to meet half of ten of them who I haven't met in person, mm -hmm. right? Them to all know each other because at the end of the day, Pat, Friday night, they're all going to be seeing me in my room. Yeah. They're all going to be together backstage, you know. So I want everyone to be comfortable with everybody and know who they can who they can lean on and be comfortable with because a lot of these people are first time competitors and we all know that it's intimidating. Yes, it is. You know, if you don't know where to go backstage, if you don't know to put your feet up, you don't know when to start pumping up. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted the people who I know have been here to meet the people who haven't. So everyone can have that comfort level because I'm only one person. Right. So 
I'm going to be backstage now with 13 of them doing the show Saturday. And I'm going to be making sure then I got to run my ass up front, watch them scream at them on stage, pictures, whatever. So I wanted them to, so that's why that came together. And Umar was like, yeah, dude, just invite them. So put everybody in a big group message. Everybody pretty much showed up. Two people dropped out the week of that. And then two people the week after. So I went down from 17 to 13. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody met up. Justin has a, a bikini girl doing it. So Justin said, can I bring her? I said, yeah, dude, no problem. Um, and then me and Justin just pretty much were looking at him. Justin poses eight of the guys doing it for me. So it just all kind of clicked. And then me, Umar, and Justin talked after. We're like, dude, it was awesome. It was three hours of everyone just laughing, smiling, getting away from the suffering and the starving. You know yeah. what I mean? Like having a good time. It was just a, it was just a really good time. So we were like, let's just see maybe if like we can help the local community put it together maybe once a month. Yeah. especially to keep people on track through that December, January, February months when we're all like, get lazy. You know how it is, you know, yes. like, and there might be a lot of first timers in our area that are thinking of competing next year that are thinking about looking for a coach, but don't know. So then they're able to come now and we all talked and we're like, yeah, let's do it. A Sunday every month. And Justin will do the posing yep. side. We'll bring in a female. We're we'll bringing in Liana. Um, you know, we want to yep. bring in other guest people, whatever the case is each time. And, you know, help others. And then they're able to come. I'll be there just if people have questions, a second eye, whatever. Like I said, I'm not a posing coach. So, um, but it'll be mainly be Liana, Justin. I know Crystal's going to be there. So it's just for everyone to have a good time and learn and stuff and get people together. Good, really. Yeah. We will. And it's not just for males as well. Like we have oh, yeah, it's females too. Yeah. We have two yeah, very yeah. good females who are going to be, you know, um, posing the females, Crystal for bikini and Liana for the other divisions. Um, and it, like I said, like Steve said, it's our, it's our way of giving back, you know, this is the first, you know, official like built by JB, you know, posing seminar. We want to kind of do this, you know, more, uh, whether it's month to month or every other month, every quarter, you know, we're trying to figure out the, the works of it, how many people we want here, you know, cause right now it's, it's pretty full. So like, we want to see how that goes and a lot of time that we have based on our, our you know, our staff per se, the coaches and how mm -hmm. many athletes we have and how we're going to line them up, how we're going to run yeah. it and whatnot. Because even though I have one-on-one -on -one sessions and I've posed people together before and we had our little fun with Steve's athletes at Asylum, you know, a month ago or whatever it was, um, this is a bit different to run a legitimate seminar. I know a lot of um, people might, again, like Steve did have their athletes come together, but when it's a seminar and you're inviting a bunch of different athletes and a bunch of different clientele with different coaches, beginners, advanced people, um, you need to have it a lot more structured, obviously, than kind of just like a go with the flow, have fun type of thing. So this first one is, is going to be exciting um, and kind of give us an idea of where to kind of go forward with it. You know, right, right, so, right. Um, and like Steve said, you know, it's a way that, you know, if we have one or two, um, you know, we have like one more later this year and one more early next year, um, in the winter years, when stage really isn't a, a thought for people, for people, it keeps people accountable as well. And it kind of gets them posing in front of us and just kind of, you know, keeping up on the little details because posing is very, very underrated. Um, in my opinion, in the amateur and professional scene, I see a lot yeah. of pros who you'd be surprised, you know, how they just don't know how to pose. And um, yeah, so it's going to be very, very fun. And we're, we're excited to bring it to, to the area and to the community as a whole, you know. All right. So I guess I know what I, what I need to I'll start advertising hard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We already <laughs> have some flyers up at, at the store and, uh, you know. Yeah, but so, directly from the social media, like definitely. Um, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. We have questions. our first one is next Sunday, the, the 9th. Um, you know, we have, um, we literally have one and Steve, I, I haven't talked to Steve since we got an update on this. We have one spot left for the males and then we have a little bit for the females. So um, definitely if you want to share that and I don't mind sharing it with the, with the chat, just to kind of, uh, we, we want to help people, you know, we want to help yeah. all, all, all divisions, you know, both genders um, and, and just kind of create a fun little atmosphere there. Um, and just kind of network, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, someone's coming there who has some experience with posing and might need a, might need a coach for their next prep. They can talk to Steve. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. You know, it's one of, you know, Steve's clients who's coming or just another coach's client who's coming just to kind of learn. And then they want to pose with me moving forward. And that's how we, that's what we do. And we get yeah. them right. You know what I mean? Um, it's just, you know, like we said, it's about giving back to everyone. Yeah. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Um, there's there's not that many things happening so a lot of people are kind of on their own 
to figure stuff out. So, uh, so yeah, I think that helps out a lot. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Now you guys are both coaches. You're posing your, your, you know, full time diet and everything else. What would you say for both of you is the most exciting part of coaching? Stevie, go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the most exciting part for me is the, when I see the before and afters, um, but it's everything that goes into the before and after that's the exciting part. So, you know, on the forefront, of course, you got, you post up a before and after, but it's everything that's changed in the background. That's the most exciting part, you know, the, the improvements in health, blood work, improving sleep, you know, the way people breathe, the quality of life, you know, like yeah. that, that's the exciting part. And then it's, it's when I get that feedback, you know, like, yeah, th that's what the, that's what excites me and motivates me, you know, and, and keeps it going. Um, you know, cause it's cool to see, right. I mean, everybody, you know, of course you want to transform, but it's, it's, there's so many other measurable variables for progress than just that before and after and weight loss and fat loss and how much muscle you build. It's, it's, yeah. you know, the, the, the normal nine to five guy or girl who has, you know, a family who literally has the motivation to wake up at 5.00 AM and do their treadmill at home. And then drops their kids off home after school and work and then goes to the gym for an hour and they're, they relay the message to me as the coach. And they're like, yeah, this is like, I'm, I'm just feeling great. I'm sleeping better. My energy's better. I don't need call. I don't need six cups of coffee every day anymore. Yeah. And then you get all that over time and you, you start to see all this, these little progress markers build up. And then six months later, you put the before and after and you see like their face light up. You know, I always say to clients, like you can see the transformation just in their face and the smile. Yeah. You know, so that, that to me, that's yeah. the most exciting part. It's just, you, you just, you change people's life, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. So. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I, uh, just real quick, Justin, that's um, like, I always say this, man, um, being able to improve somebody's life is more is priceless yeah right? you're like you can't you can't put a dollar symbol without that because it, and or seeing a person's gratitude right um is 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 truly truly priceless just like you know because we went through all this too right i mean you know we started sure out from the bottom you know we saw the changes and <clears throat> i mean think about the first time we got our digestive going right digestion going yeah. right and hunger spiking and bloating gone. We're like, what is going on? Yep. Or like, we didn't need all this caffeine during the day, like you mentioned, or natural just was, was sure. bumping or we're getting up at five or four 30. Like it's normal and doing this stuff. Everybody hates to do, you know, while everybody's turning in bed and we're just more than happy to do it. So, um, so yeah, it's like, we're reliving the experiences that we kind of went through um through the other individuals and just being proud to yeah, be able awesome. to do that on the flip side man yeah um, for sure that's yeah that's how justin, i feel like go ahead pat sorry justin you don't have to say anything anymore we're already covered you we're good <laughs> <laughs> now i'm yeah. good go ahead jay go ahead no i mean listen I'm, I'm a coach as well so everything steve said is true it's really really cool to more so change someone um in terms of like their their internal health and mental health, um, not just physically, right? You know, I think those are two, I don't want to say underrated things because I think they're very um, recognized now, um, but it's cool for me coaching a lot more lifestyle clients to be able to help them outside of just a physical um, goal they have set or a physical um, level that we're comparing, right? From a yeah, posing yeah. standpoint, it might not seem... Uh, it might seem quite obvious, right? Like a before and after or being able to change someone very, very quickly. A uh, great example, I posed Zay last night. And okay. Zay, we got his back lat spread to open up tremendously more in a second by how we adjust his hands and how we have him open lower around his spine and mm -hmm. into his lats and keeping it low. Um, and like, it's cool to kind of be able to do that right then and there, snag a before and after and show him literally what that looks like 
and have the client say like, oh, damn, like that's in literally a second, we just changed the whole of appearance of a pose, right? I mm -hmm. think the cool thing for me though, is watching someone take what I taught them and make it their own. Um, a great example is I had a client who, a posing client who was going to his first show and he came to me at like six weeks out, seven weeks out. And he's coached by someone who I know who I'm friends with. And um, I first saw him and I was like, man, this is going to be a nightmare for the kid. Like this kid doesn't look good. He doesn't pose well. I know it was his first session. I felt like he kind of got into it just to kind of say he did it. Um, boy, oh boy, by the time we hit our last session, when we were like a week out from his show, I would say, I, I honestly, my jaw was dropped at how much improved he was in every facet and every category and what I taught him, he made his own and like his transitions were beautiful. How he was posing was beautiful. Besides some last minute manipulations, obviously we all need them, including myself as we get to a week out, depending on how the body morphs, we might have to pose a different way to hide something that might have um, lost a little bit of fullness or, you know, like, a, like leg positioning, lo legs lose a lot of fullness as we get closer to a show. So we mm -hmm. might have to pose differently. So with him though, he just like, he shocked me. He had my jaw on the floor and it's so cool to have a client like that kind of like make you, you know, I, I guess, bite your tongue and like really take what you taught them and just completely get it and do it their way. It's really yeah. cool to see that and something that you can't emulate with, with like every client, you know, it's very individualized for, for the client. Now that's what, that's the best part, right? What part would, would you say, I wouldn't use the word worst, but what part I you would say feels the most difficult or frustrating um, from what you basically, from your career, from your, what you do? Steve, yeah, I spoke, so you go first. With coaching? <laughs> yeah, so, so, <laughs> so, so in coaching, right? We already, we, we touched base on the, the glamour, right? The amazing part yeah. that makes it so exciting. Now, what part makes it either difficult or like I can speak for days, the days where you're just like, fuck, man, like, you know, what would you say in your in your mind, man? In your opinion, when you know somebody is not listening, yeah, and, and they swear that they are <laughs> the, yeah. the most frustrating thing because I'll do at some point when you see so many people and you know, you know, when someone's listening or they're not there, mm -hmm. there's no way I'm feeding you, dude, 120 carbs a day. You're 250 pounds and you're not losing weight. And if you're doing that 35 minutes of car, stop lying to me. Like mm -hmm. that's the most frustrating part. So I'll let it go. Then one week, two weeks. Okay. You know, there is, there is up front. I always found now a possibility that maybe the approach at the time is not working. So that's why when we'll get into how are you sleeping? That's why I ask all these questions and check-ins on their form when they fill it out each week. How's your sleep? Because it's very possible your sleep shitty. Yeah. You had a sh shitty week at work. Your cortisol's up. But after like a month, I'm like, I'll just call them out at this point. I'm like, listen, man, you're telling me you're sleeping eight hours a night. You're under stress. You're clicking the box that says none. On the scale of stress, you're putting zero. Dude, like, what's going on? I know you're not listening. And nine times out of 10, they'll just be like, yeah, you're right. I was scared. You know, I had seven beers on Saturday night. And, you know, like, but I feel like, too, like, as a coach, that's also part of the job, right? Like, yeah. you know, Tom Brady, if he's not doing his part and the coach knows it, he's going to get called out in any sport. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. I feel like that's part of the job too. But for me, that's the most frustrating part when you know they're not listening and then they're, they're, you know, and they swear they are, but you know, but other than that, I mean, something that just another, just a big pet peeve of mine. I don't even know why is like, if your check-in day is Tuesday and you send it Friday, but you don't let me know, it's like, like, okay. So I'm making adjustments. I tell them today, I have to make some changes. Right. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to check in Tuesday again. You only have three days. There's no way we're going to see if this is working. Right. 
And then they'll and then they'll just like go back to normal, like on their check-in day. I'm like, what, what the heck? Like, I don't care. Shit happens. Just let me know. I just ask for communication because I have everything so organized on my end. I know these 24 people are checking in Tuesday. These 20 are checking in Wednesday. These many Thursday. So it's like out of nowhere, I won't hear from you Tuesday. And then Friday out of nowhere at 7 p.m. it pops up. And then you eat, then they'll email me and be like, hey, coach, did you get my check-in? It's like, dude, it's Friday night at 8.30. Like, yeah, that too. And then like, I've had to set hours. And when people don't really respect the hours, like that, that too can get on, get a little annoying, you know, at, like at times. Late text, late text messages and stuff like that, you mean? Oh, uh, dude, like, Pat, I got a, some guy called me like last year. I don't coach him anymore. This like normal, like in his thirties, he called me at like 4 a.m nice four times and i admit it's my phone's on do not disturb and i'm like six o'clock i'm on my stairs and i'm like did you mean to call me four times at 4 30 he's like yeah i just didn't know what the sub avocado out with my my wife ate the last one and i'm like dude you like i'm like first of all i do everything over email you had my number because my old business cards had it and mm-hmm. you know i'm like but dude please email me like i'm sleeping dude like <laughs> Bro, but I don't have any avocado. Like, <laughs> yeah. what do you mean? <laughs> so it's just little, little, little things like that, right? Because, like, I have hours. everything's going to be destroyed. The plan's done. Can't do this anymore. I know I'm not competing, but it's fucking over. There's no avocado. It's all your fault. You didn't pick up the phone. Yeah, I want my money like, back. <laughs> things like that, though. Like, and and nine out of ten times I, I answer anyway. If I see an email come in now and I can answer it real quick, I'm answering it. So it is part on me for not setting that boundary a little bit, but I'm getting much better with it um, because I know once once my kids here in the next month and a half. Oh yeah, forget it. Forget you it. know I'm gonna that time should be for family, and I've been told by many people who I respect over the last few months that those hours should be set. Unless you have Pete, you're peaking people like right now. Like I have people sending me pictures up till midnight tonight. So yeah, which is different. You're peaking. Which is yeah. different. But you know, I have hours of seven a.m. to five p.m. Pretty fair, you know. So it, you know, I, I've just been blocking the email out after that time, you know, and, and setting that boundary, and it's gotten much better. And I think that also too adds to like a coach's mental burnout because mm-hmm. you can't be working all day. Like, I mean, Pat, you get it. You got a bunch, the bunch of all the stores you I'm sh- sure, you know, dude, like, you know, and it's hard to leave work at work, you know, like as soon as I pop yeah. up on this desk um, it's tough, man. Cause I'll get inquiries at night and I'll answer them like an idiot. <laughs> and I'll be like, Hey, bro. Yeah, dude, you're not the only one, man. Yeah, I, I know. And it's funny. I know. And it's it's funny your what your so your situation is you're directly dealing with people that that's your whole job right like in my situation yes I deal with people but realistically like I sell them supplements I give them advice but because I help them so much more like it'll be like nine thirty and I start answering a DM or like fucking ten I'll answer an yeah. email. And I'm just like, what am I doing? Why am I going through this? I should just leave it for like 5 a.m. when I'm doing my cardio. <laughs> and you can't, though. It's tough. It's so hard to. And yeah. I'm trying to get better at it um, because I don't want to set that example for my kid either. You know what I mean? Like work should be work and and whatnot. And I mean, my phone just goes, it's all day. I mean, I'm a- I average 20 to 25 check-ins a day. And then, mm-hmm. it, you know, I have a whole thing set up now where like people like, I hate Instagram messages for inquiries because it's so disorganized. And to me, it's just not professional. That's just me. Mm-hmm. You know, so like I have a whole thing on my link tree where you fill out an inquiry form, you know, um, you could set up a phone call or a Zoom link with me. I have a whole thing set up and a lot of people do. I won't even entertain now taking a client on unless we speak first, whether it's a Zoom, yeah, that's good. FaceTime, you know, because I want to see, you know, if the person's serious, you know, and, and they're willing to work because, you know, I tell them like, this isn't a one month thing. You got to be willing to at least give six months to change. I mean, you got to give somebody time to learn your body. You know, you're going to have shitty weeks. We, I tell them you have to account for that. You're a human being. We all make mistakes yeah. and we all have bad weeks. Um, you know, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, it's like we talked about already. It's a very rewarding job. I agree. Justin, go ahead, buddy. Um, what do you, yeah, what I, do you I, hate? What do you hate the most? 
So I'll talk like posing first because there's not many things I hate when it comes to posing, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the one thing I'm not going to say I hate with posing, but the one thing that does make things extremely difficult um, is when you have an individual who can't do certain things that come very, very easy to others and you have to work around it, right? Um, an example, some people cannot flex their quads. Like they can't flex their quads. They have no quad lines. They don't know how to hold, no matter what type of manipulation I assert with them and have them attempt to do, they can't squeeze their quads and they start shaking like Bambi. Um, Another thing is people are extremely um, scapula dominant when it comes to uh, their back and they don't know how to open up their lats. So like flaring their lats is something like, I had a posing client who's actually like a client of mine who wants to compete. And he did some posing sessions with me. And I literally had to go behind him. And like when he was trying to do his, his, um, his relaxed, his scaps, he just didn't know how to not engage them and like retract. So I had to like shove his back open literally with my hands during our session. And it kind of looked good. So we kind of just had to like manipulate it then. But then again, like sometimes with those individuals, you're telling them almost how to train as well to kind of get those things to pop more, right? Like if someone comes, they don't know how to squeeze their quads. Most of the time I ask them what their leg training is like, they start with a squat or they start with a leg press. I'm like, you need to start with like a single leg extension. I need you to feel that muscle working with the lats. Like you need to start with a, a single arm pull down or a pull over or something, something like that. Isolate. Yeah. Isolate. Yeah, movement, isolate basically. things. And that's, that's something that like has really helped me develop some of my weaker points and just develop as a whole, even my stronger points, the ability to kind of feel what you're doing before your heavy compounds, before you get into the meat and the potatoes of the, of the workout. So that's kind of something that is something, something that's difficult to work around with posing clients. Cause you don't want to waste a whole session covering one pose. Right. But like at the end of the day, if someone is having a difficult time hitting a pose, you got to you got to get it into them because it matters when you're on stage. You don't look good for that one pose that can point you down quite a bit. Right. So mm-hmm. that's something with posing. And then in regards to like coaching for nutritional and training and whatnot, what we see was like lifestyle prep clients. I just hate lying. I hate lying. Um, I, I, like Steve said, we know, and this for anyone's watching who doesn't work with a coach or do who does work with a coach, we know when you are absolutely fucking with us, sorry with my language, um, but we know you're when, getting censored. I'm sorry. Pat, you curse. <laughs> I'm kidding, dude. I just thought about that. But um, you no, know, we know when you're when you're toying us around, and oftentimes we aren't even upset that you're doing that. It's more so that one, you lied. And two, that you're wasting our time. Yes, you're paying right. for you're paying for our time, but now we have to change everything around based on the fact that, like, again, what Steve said earlier, if you're 250 pounds and you are having 100 grams of carbs, whatever, whatever you said, and you're not dropping weight, and your protein is pretty steady for where it should be, and your fats pretty steady for where it should be, and your cardio is at a relatively good point, you either are really metabolically fucked but if we are doing some some blood analysis like some blood work and we Mm -hmm. are figuring out some some certain levels and they are in check um you are just toying with us and i i hate that i hate the lying i'd rather you come out clean and say yeah man i'm up four pounds this week i i had a cheat meal um and some some beers um i apologize because you know at the end of the day it's not okay you don't want the athlete to do that or the client to do that regularly but if they're upfront and honest it makes it so much better the integrity behind them is so much more and if someone's toying with you for so long eventually you don't trust any of their check-ins or any of their uh, of them of the communication with this athlete right so that's a big pet peeve of mine probably is just the lying um and not being true to the program. And if you can't be true to the program, let us coaches know, because we'll try to work with you. That's what you're paying for. Now, listen, if you need us to change everything every single week and you need every meal to be different then go, then you could take a hike. But like, if let's say like something just really not settling. What if I don't have any avocado? 
What do I do about it? Well, listen, so, so <laughs> that's I'm kidding. Google. I'm kidding. That's called Google. The, no, no, no. But I, I had a, I had a girl, a uh, client like, you know, a year and a half ago who avocado, avocado made her sick to her stomach. So like, mm-hmm. as a coach, why would I put avocado in her plan? If she told me beforehand, she can't stomach that food, right? Like on my, on my like questionnaire type thing, I'll say yeah. like, what food allergies or what foods do you absolutely Right. The basic stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so I do not put those in your program because I don't want you like, listen, when it comes to prep, there's going to be a point where you have your tilapia, you have your asparagus, you you, like, you got to embrace the suck. Um, However, like if you absolutely dread something year round when you're not in prep, why would I give it to you? Like, why would I put it in your plan and torture you like that? You know? So we're, we're really, really good at working with our athletes in terms of their needs but you have to work with us as well be honest about them yeah. um, i think that's the biggest thing is the honesty and the integrity between the coach and the client a lot of the times it's it's more so on the client i gotta be honest with you it's more so on the client yeah. Yeah. I, I find a lot of the people who aren't who think a coach like say somebody goes on my instagram they're like wow good amount of transformations They hop on, but they're not really mentally ready, right? It's one thing to be physically ready, but mentally ready, right? So they think, oh, this guy's going to work magic. When they they really don't realize, like, it's not like, sure, we make tweaks and stuff that the manipulations do make a difference at some point, right? But at the end of the day, like, like we said earlier, like, if you're overweight and you just, and you need to lose weight, like, a lot of the calculations we give you up front just from the simple fact of you just changing how you're eating, drinking yes. a little bit more water and doing 20 minutes on a treadmill like that, you're going to drop some, even water weight. So you can keep your out. calories the same. We could keep your calories the exact yeah, same. Yeah. And just, and just feed you nutrient dense food yeah. and get good carbs and, and feed you more protein and, and some and good fats. You're going to drop something. Yeah. But I think it's a lot of the people who lie are just those that are not mentally ready for it. And a lot of the people I see lie are the people that they're in their sixth week and they're like, yeah, it's just same for me. I'm like, you, you haven't even given yourself, forget me, yourself an honest try because this is for you. Like people don't understand, like if you lose that 50 pounds that you need to lose, you could be adding 10 years onto your life. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. and I told a lady that the other day, she asked me for a phone call and I said, listen, you know, we're nine weeks in here. You've only gained weight. And she's, she's honest though. She doesn't lie. Like she's straight up. I have this, this alcohol, these cheat meals the whole weekend. I skip my workouts. So she's like, I need a phone call for motivation. And I'm, I was very honest. I said, listen, if you need a phone call every two weeks for motivation, you're not mentally ready to change your life. This lady, I guess yeah. that got through to her. Cause I didn't give her a phone call. And I just emailed her that back. She literally the next week dropped nine pounds of water. And in her check-in under her comment, she's like, that was the kick in the ass I needed. Cause I told her, I'm like, you don't understand. Like you straight up told me your doctor has advised you that you need to lose at least a hundred pounds. So she's severely mm-hmm. obese. And she, I'm like, you have a kid. That's what I told her. I'm like, you don't seem mentally ready to change. And if you don't lose this weight that your doctor advised you to lose, I was like, you do realize you're probably going to take 10 years off your life. And she's like, that's exactly what I needed to hear. But she's like, the doctor didn't tell me that. I'm like, yeah, well, that's my job. I'm here to be honest. Yeah, they can't because they really just, they don't want you to lose weight. They actually want you to be heavy so they can keep giving you pills. Yeah, I was going to say, give me medication. <laughs> but I told her that. And yeah. the, the lady, the last two weeks now, again, I mean, she checked in the last week, nine pounds down. Sure, it's water, but it's a start. No cardio. Yeah, but it, mess, but no. that right there, that right there is the motivation. Yep. And then behind the scenes, she's building discipline. Yeah. And I mean, it goes for everything though in life right so like we take a normal person and i mean this is competitor or just lifestyle and like you just said pat you're you're building not only a better lifestyle for yourself and better health but you're building discipline that's going to carry over i mean i've seen it with clients it carries over to their work the time they're up they don't need an alarm anymore to get up like i said earlier no caffeine like it's crazy to see some of some of the changes and like some of these clients I have competing Saturday too, like just seeing the transformations between the, the befores and afters, like it, it just blows my mind. And honestly, like at this point, I get more excited for people than I would for me stepping on stage. I mean, it's the truth, you know. Well, you're you're competing through them. 
Yeah, it's awesome. It's incredible, honestly. Like, I'm excited for every single one of them. The one girl in South Carolina, Brie, I mean, what a pleasure. Like, two hours of cardio a day. The girl, like, at eight weeks out, I had her no carbs. Like, never a peak. And then it's like, you see these top pros, like, on their YouTubes bitching. And yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, you got a, this little girl <laughs> doing bikini and she's a, the n- nicest, quietest, was the most normal lifestyle girl. This didn't even start as competing. It's like, Steve, hey, I'm in South Carolina. I see your before and afters. I just want to, like, feel better. And here we are 12 months later, down 40 pounds. And she's about to step on stage in a day and a half. And the girl doesn't give a shit if she places first or dead last. She straight up told me earlier, she's like, Steve, I, I just am having so much fun with this. And it's like... That's the, the rewarding stuff you see, you know, and like I said, I mean, a lot of these people Saturday, it's, it's a lot of their first time this week's been a lot more mental coaching than it has been water, sodium, food, but it's, it's cool to see. And it's, it's rewarding. And I'm excited for, for all of them for Saturday to just show, you know, all the hard work. I mean, we all, we all three of us know what goes into a real contest prep. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. all do, you know, and it's not easy, uh, especially when, everybody works and some have families and kids it's not easy so you know the respects and the hats off to anybody who does it but i'm excited for all of them it's going to be cool yeah for sure i'm going to be now, dead tired but it's okay just sleep on sunday yeah Maybe that's what i said messages. football and sleep <laughs> now do you guys do you because you've been coaching for a couple of years now are you noticing an increase in clients reaching out and just more worried about PEDs than actual anything else. Uh, you want me to go first? I'll I'll, or. I'll I'll um <laughs> I'll chime in real quickly on this just because this literally happened to me um, recently. Someone inquired about um about coaching, mm-hmm. and um relatively younger guy, and he wanted to work with me because he. I forget exactly what he said. He thought he thought I was a good coach. I was a good pro. He wanted to work with me. He was, you know, inspired, yada, yada. Um, and he, he made a comment like, um, when it comes to, you know, performance enhancers, how do you view them? He's like, you know, I was, I'm with a coach now who, um, who supplies me my stuff. Do you do that stuff? And I'm Here we like, go. I'm like, uh- I'm not well, a drug dealer. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not a drug dealer. I'm like, I'm, I'm a coach. Um, I'm not a drug dealer. You have, like, and when people ask too many, que- and I've learned this and Steve can probably accept this as well. When people ask way too many questions, you got to put your foot down and say, Hey, listen, there's going to come a point where you just have to trust this and you gotta, you gotta pay for your first month and then we'll hop on a call. Then we'll talk about yeah. stuff because I can't, I, I like, I got to know that you're legit about, about any, any part of it, not even, even just a lifestyle client who wants to lose weight. It doesn't even have to be performance enhancer related by any means. It just comes mm-hmm. to a point where like, you gotta, um, you got to put your foot down. Like, you know, you, like you guys talk about setting boundaries and whatnot, you know what I mean? Because if you answer too many questions and you're taking up way too much time for this individual and they don't end up signing up, it's kind of like a waste in a sense. And like, yeah, it could have been a potential client, but you, you, you kind of have to put your foot down with certain things. And that's definitely one of them. Like, okay, listen, like, you know, you, you know, when we move forward with hiring, we can kind of talk about this, but unfortunately in this current time and, you know, I'm sign off on whatever you want to, but at the end of the day, like, you know, some things you don't want to like step those boundaries with, you know, um, off the get go, especially if you're, if you're first time talking to this individual, you know, mm-hmm. What about you, Steve? I, um, yeah, so I see more of this amongst the younger generation, mm-hmm. which just completely blows my mind because when, when I first started getting into bodybuilding, when I was 18, I met Jeff Long. I was training with him for like a year. There was never any talks of any of that. You know what I mean? And like, you didn't see all this Instagram and TikTok stuff and like, I mean, there's kids 18 years old just open about PED use yes. on the internet, YouTube, all this. And I'm like, it's very odd to see. Um, it's honestly a, 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 ma- a majority of the shit they're saying. You're like, mm, you're fucking lying. Yeah. For, and for, and you're, and you're literally giving advice that's horrible. Yeah, It's a shame to see too, Pat, right? Because at the end of the day, like 
Well, where's your nutrition at? Are you even training properly? Yeah, they just you know, it's like, yeah. so when I get inquiries of, from somebody asking, like, hey, Steve, do you write the protocols? I say, yeah, I'll write the protocol. I'm not supplying anything, of course. That, that's, on, that's on you on your end, right? To, to gr grab whatever it is. But I don't, at this rate, I, unless I see blood work first, yeah. There yeah. will not be any PED protocol that's put on a plan. I don't care if you're just a normal dude who wants to take TRT and some Anivar or just TRT, or if you're somebody who wants to compete. I mean, obviously we, we all know that when you compete, there's more that goes into it from mm -hmm. a compound standpoint, but um, I don't care who it is. Uh, you know, it's gotta, we have to see some type of blood work with certain things I ask for because why I don't know you, I don't know your body. So how do I know that I'm not going to, put xyz on your plan and your cholesterol is already jacked up and your liver enzymes already jacked up yeah and me recommending this to you and then you going and willingly taking it is going to just jack things up to a very very unhealthy blood marker range so i got to see blood work no matter what it is and then when people are on it and i'm coaching them anything uh there's certain blood blood work checkpoints i'll do too like i'll just mm -hmm. Be like, listen, whether it's your insurance or here's a website, you can order blood work, you know, from third party source here. We need, you've been on this for 12 weeks. We're going to, here's the protocol to come off. Yeah. Yeah. We need blood work at, on the, by this date. And if you can't, then we're off and I'm not going to put anything recommendation back. You know, it's just, right. it is what it is. Cause at the end of the day, as the coach, your health is in our hands too, you know? Correct. So that this is how I view it. But yes, I do get a lot of inquiries asking. And when I know it's the first question they ask, I don't even entertain the inquiry or the conversation anymore. I just professionally will tell somebody I can't talk about that unless you have your legal waivers, you know, and hold harmless agreements signed and, and you're paid like Justin set up for at least your first month, you know, and, yeah. and then I I'll say, how's your diet and nutrition? You know, how's your nutrition? How's your training? Like, Good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's I, great. I, yeah. I eat a lot. I eat all the time. But yeah, I get, I mean, it's a lot of young kids, man. I get, I don't know if you guys know my client, Riley. I'm sure you've seen me post him. He's 16. Mm -hmm. I'm very good friends with his father. So that's why I coach the kid. He's got obviously tremendous potential, tremendous genetics for 16. It's just insane. But um, I coach him because I know his dad. I don't help under 18, really. Um, I help two others and I've actually had zoom calls with their parents first Yeah, where I have like their parents literally will have to give me a picture of their ID, sign the legal waivers for the kid. And then that, okay. But I have a very extensive talk first, but I only have three kids under 18. That's it. Besides that, I get so I get at least 20 to 30 inquiries a month, just from that kid, Riley from 15, 16 year olds. I don't even answer them because Come on, an 18 year old's not having 200, 250 a month to afford a coach, like someone's 16, yeah. you know? And it's not even all about that, but the responsibility for, is like they all want to, hey, is creatine good? Well, how about we just start with you knowing that getting it used to eating a cup of rice five times a day and some chicken? It's the tools, right? Because yeah. I mean, that's the pretty, that's the pretty thing, right? That's what's always talked about. Um, and it's especially now because so many everything's in the open, especially with the younger generation, you know, from the influences and so forth. And you know what? It's a good thing and a bad thing because at least the good thing is they're being open. So you don't have to fucking create a false, you know, like a false perception. Yep. The bad thing is the kids following it are just like, well, I'll just do that and pose. And, you know, Listen, not everybody's going to end up being, and I would, use this, I would use this one guy as an example, and I doubt anybody would listen to his name. So uh, uh, English, right? J James English, he just turned yeah. pro. Okay. How's the genetics, man? Right? He uh, PDs were put in, everything responded. He hit a show, hit a show, won, won his whole thing. But you know how I know there was no fucking base built there? It's because, you know, he's on his YouTube channel after he turns pro complaining to his, that he wants his coach to increase his TRT dosage because he has no motivation to train in a gym. Like, bro, you just became pro. You just, you did something millions of people that want to do, 
right? He's like 22 years old. Yes. And you're telling me it's your motivation is PEDs. And now you're saying this on YouTube and guess, and you thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids listening to this, this is what you're feeding them. Right. You're not feeding them structure, discipline, you know, the whole process of dieting and so forth. You're feeding him, them a lie and just basically telling them, you could just, you could be on point here and there, show some meals, enjoy your life and take PEDs and you'll be fine. Okay, so, yeah, so that's. There was none that's, of this, Pat. When we, when all three of us got into no. bodybuilding, there was none. Like in 2012, when I did my, or 13, when I did my first show, it was an OCB show. There wasn't even like men's physique. It was like the first year for it or something. Like, you either did bikini or bodybuilding. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there was nothing of PED, like no talk. It was like that huge elephant in the room. And I didn't yes. even and I didn't even really know like the ins and outs of them until I was two, three years into it. Like, you know what I mean? But I, it never crossed my mind either. I just was like, shit, I like to train. This like literally had got me on a straight and narrow path from being picked on and not fitting in in high school. Like that's all mm-hmm. I cared about was training, learning how to eat better, listening to the coach, you know, and, and that was it. It was and not until that was presented like, Hey, this is part of the sport. This is what it takes to be competitive at this level. But now it's like, so you can go on freaking Google, you guys know, and type in beginners PED cycle and mm-hmm. 5 million things pop up that people and YouTube channels to. and everything. Yeah. YouTube channels. It's and insane. Everything. Like I just don't get it. And I always tell, I tell clients, you know, they'll start with like, well, people were talking about, and I literally will type back in quotes, people were talking about, like, don't listen to every, cause there's so much shit out there. You know, like if you're paying somebody, that's the only opinion you should be listening to. Right. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you guys might disagree, but I, you know, why are you going to, well, yeah, you're, it's, it, I say this this way, right? There's multiple ways to get to New York, New York City, right? Well, you're telling me one way. Justin's going to tell me another way. And these two other people are going to tell me another way because I decided to listen to them. I ain't get to fucking New York. Yeah. I'm stuck going back and forth. Yeah. And then you start to put to all four together. And then that's when you run into like that, a freaking collision. So, yeah. you know, it's just, it, it's crazy, man. Like all the PED talk nowadays and stuff. And, I'm, and there was one kid. I think he inquired, this was like a year ago on Instagram starts messaging me. And he's like, Hey Steve, um, you help a buddy of mine. And he's like, can you give me a text? And his phone number was like an area code. And so I looked it up. This kid was like in Oregon and I'm like, I mean, we can communicate here. Like, what what's up? Do you have, a, like, a coaching question? And this kid just straight up goes, yeah, so, like, I don't know how to post cycle off of this. This is my first cycle. 18, 19 years old, Pat, was on, like, 1,000 milligrams of testosterone, 800 milligrams of DECA, and 100 milligrams of d I said, first of all, how's your blood pressure? Because if you're really on 100 milligrams of real d your head's going to explode. And I was like... First of all, I perfect like I'm not going to tell I can't tell you what to do because I have you're not with me. But I was like, at your age, my recommendation is do not touch any of that stuff. And I'm yeah, like, you're pretty it, much you're you're pretty much fucked for the rest of your life. I'm like, what? Yeah. The stuff must have been fake though, part of it because there's no way. I'm he's like, no, my blood pressure is good. I feel fine. I'm like, feeling fine. You know, we all feel fine. And then. You get that blood work back, some people, and you're like, oh, shit. Okay, I'm really not fine. Dude, the minute anybody goes over 500 milligrams of test, that's a skyrocket of everything, blood pressure or sweating or whatever it is, especially if somebody doesn't have anything for health to control that or anything, especially if they're eating regular fucking food. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, dude, it's you know, he probably got fucking chipped. Probably yeah. got his money. And- well, <laughs> I can give a good example, um, you know, just from – me personally speaking from just this past year about how important building that base of your nutrition and compound lifts and learning how to train right over here. So me got married last September. We knew we wanted to start a family. I was literally on TRT from November to just July. Yep. So what are we seven months? 
Mm-hmm. I got blood work four times over the span of that. Came back the first time last November. Some things were off, just normal shit after coming off. The la- the other three times I got it in January, April, and then July again before I went back on anything. Perfect. I was on 200 milligrams of test a week and yeah. I felt fantastic. My weight didn't yeah. budge at all. I stayed 238 to 40 pounds the whole time. Sure, mm-hmm. I was flatter, not as good palms, strength went down, but all the normal things, but I felt great. But that's just proof that that base that you build over years of just consistent hard training, mastering movements and mechanics and eating your damn freaking meals, even through bad days is what builds that dense muscle. You know what I mean? So it's not going to go anywhere, drugs or not. Yeah. So if anybody, you know, younger is listening to that, that's just proof that, I mean, because at this rate, I've been freaking training now for 11 years. I mean, it, it's, and it's gone by like that. It's just look crazy mm-hmm. looking back. Um, I mean, we just compete. We competed last year. It's already been 18 months. Of that. I know. So and this year, yeah, the, um, another thing to chime in on that with Steve is like, you know, just so the young kids know, like, like, cause some people look at my physique and they, you know, they, they, I've been expressed to by individuals. Like I want to be a pro. I want to have a physique like yours and whatnot. Just so people know, I did my first three shows completely natural. Um, yeah. I, I, plus, plus the other thing is your physique structure is a structure that's already genetically set up yeah. a certain way. Sure. Your yeah. hard work and everything fills that in, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But the way your, your shoulders are, the way your hips are, your fucking and the way the structure is just set up is genetic, right? Yeah, yeah, the for sure. Muscles you're building on top, that's all you. That's literally all you. So you can't like like if I look at you and be like, oh man, I want to look just like him. It ain't gonna fucking happen. Like my yeah. hips are not the same as yours. They're just certain, th- they're just not made no matter what I do. And the body, my body was shaped completely different. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, I think a lot of times people a lot of the kids don't realize that. Hence, why they look like somebody like Chris Bump, and just assume they could just be there. Yeah, yeah, and like you know, that's a great point. Some people, um, unfortunately, do not have the genetic makeup and structure for this, and that's why, that's why bodybuilding's been around for so many years. And there's only one Mister Olympia. There's only one person that you remember per generation. I mean, there's more than mm-hmm. one, but like. You know, the main ones, yeah. Yeah, there's the tip of the top. You know, those are the guys who climb the ranks and have made it there. And the other people, you don't see them. They have normal jobs. They have normal this, that, and the other thing. I mean, for fuck's sake, I mean, just so people know, I'm I'm in the IFBB, but I pose people, I have clients, and I run one of the Aries Nutrition stores. Like bodybuilding don't pay the bills. Yeah, I'm I'm working a a crap ton, you know what I mean? And I'm I'm bossing my ass on that end still, because we talked about like influencers earlier and people who make money just off of, you know, posting and whatnot you know it's not it's not real and i'd encourage every individual because there was there was a young guy as well who told me he didn't want to go to school because he wanted to become an influencer i'm like what the fuck i'm like what do you mean i was like you have no following to start with you have no nothing to you You have no college degree (laughs) you're working like a simple like you know minimum wage job which nothing's wrong with that by any means you got to start you got to work you got to start somewhere right but like you got it you know you there's more to you know bodybuilding than um just being an influencer and just being, I guess, a bodybuilder in a sense Like you got to have these other avenues and whatnot, you know, a lot of, I think it's a generational thing. I think social media has ruined a lot for these young up and coming kids. Cause I don't really see it amongst, let's say the older population, you know what I mean? That is into it's, a, it. it's, a, it's under the 24, under the 23 years. Yeah, old. for sure. It's a shame. You know, it really sucks because like Steve was saying earlier, sometimes you will get people to say, man, I fucked up my cycle. Like, what should I do for this? And, and genuinely, I don't know about you, Steve, but sometimes like in our deep down in our heart, like you want to help people. Like you don't want people to, you know, like be fucked up. You don't want people to have done things the wrong way. Um, so you have to be very careful with what you do and say in those particular situations, because at the end of the day, man, we just want to help people. That's all we do. What, you know, if you look at my three jobs I have, whether it's posing, I'm helping people like, you know, all my coaching is helping people running, the, running Aries. I'm helping people when they come in they're they're inquiring about supplementation, you know? So it's like, all we want to do is help people. But sometimes there is a boundary as we were assessing and t- talking about earlier that these people do kind of take that step over and they put us in this 
situation that is definitely not fair, um, you know, as as coaches and as individuals answering these questions, it's it's not fair. And, um, you know, I definitely feel bad for the younger population because there is a lot more out there that can be misleading and mis mis uh, misrepresent the people right here. Uh, Steve, myself, you know, what they might hear and see um, is not actually what the fuck is going on amongst people who have a physique that they want to acquire. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a bunch of nonsense that is out there. It's a shame, unfortunately. Yeah, it's bad. And, I mean, I think, too, yeah. anybody who has, you know, who who's ever been competitive, whether it's winning overalls at a regional show, top 10 at nationals, whatever the case is who has a respectable physique that somebody looks up to in the younger generation, you know, I think a common trend amongst everybody in that regard is that nobody's ever like really taken an astronomical amount of shit. You know what I mean? Like, because there, there, you, there has to be some level headedness too in this game. Right. I mean, we all know that. And here's the other thing too. What they're not realizing is just because you're taking more, doesn't, doesn't mean get. things are going to get better. It actually mm-hmm. makes shit worse. Oh, because the people, yes, because the sure. people that start taking more, they're substituting the what they're taking for either cardio, the food, the diet, you know, the training, right? And number two, like you're not going to fucking function if you're emotional. And your hormones are so misbalanced. If you're fucking depressed, if you start getting angry, I don't, like, yeah. it, you, you know what I'm saying? The side yeah, effects. the side effects. Yeah. yeah. What's crazy too is like, we all know, man, like both of you know, when you're like four weeks out and it's like a chore to get up and take a piss, it's a chore to get up and put socks on. Like, if you can't handle that without a horm- outside hormones, what the hell makes somebody think they're going to handle it with excess hormones? Because I'm sure you guys will both agree that shit makes it worse. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I'm four weeks out, dude, like I don't like a car could hit me and I wouldn't care. I'm like, whatever. You know what I mean? I'm like, whatever. Like it just, you guys know you don't care because you just have zero mental capacity to handle anything other than, I need to sit the fuck down or like, you're like, I have to piss. And all you can think about is like, how the fuck am I going to get up off this couch? Like, you know, I to friggin' you guys are going to crack up this, but like when I won collegiate nationals in what, 17, I was so out of it at two weeks out. I, I was, I thought I was in the bathroom peeing and I was in the hallway pissing. I was like, <laughs> at my old house in Cherry Hill. Dude, my dad got up at like 4 a.m. like, what the hell are you doing? Dude, and I was flushing the toilet, he said, like this. And I just walked back in bed. I was so out of it. I thought I was in the bathroom. Dude. That's, like, not, dude, that's not normal, just for anyone listening. Been- <laughs> but I was that's so- not what happens when you're a prep. It's just, it's- no. but, but like at that no. point, though, all I was telling Johnny and he was telling me was like, We're, you're going to push. We've been together three years already. I'm pushing you now like you've never been pushed. I was on like such low fats, no carbs for like nine days straight at that point. I was on two hours of cardio. I was so out of it. All I wanted to do was sit the fuck down. So I was like 10 days out. And he was like, you're going to get a refeed this weekend. We're going to refill you up. But we need to push that last little bit of film off your glutes. And you both know it's you're checking your glutes every fucking day at two weeks out. Right. So yeah. I do. I was so delirious from having no carbs. It was a week straight and I, I just had no energy. I was like this in the hallway, like flushing the toilet. My dad said, like thinking I was pissing in the bathroom. And then I just went back to bed. Like I didn't pee or anything. I didn't piss in the, on the floor. I just thought I was in the bathroom. And I was just like, all right. We I actually pissed. thought you were full blow pissing. Yeah. He thought way. I was. Cause, cause I used, you know how it is. You're up every 45 minutes peeing. At yeah. And I was just like, thought I was peeing. And I was standing there like this. He said, flushing the toilet. And then I just walked back to bed. He was like, what? He, but, you know, like, it, it, it is what it is, man. You got, I'm sure you guys have been there, like, where you're freaking just out of it, you mm-hmm. know? Um, but, yeah, it's uh, – but back to, like, the, the PEDs, man. It's just – you don't need much. You need to get as far as you can get with minimal amount. Absolutely. Yeah. 
that's the biggest thing. Um, the one biggest advice that we can give to anybody that's listening is it really doesn't take much, man. It's so like, I'll use like, say for an example, like for me, I, uh, I'm listen, I can motivate and discipline myself to do fucking anything and push myself to do whatever it is. But when it comes to pushing myself in past, like insane amounts in training and being mentally on point, I need a plan in front of me and I need to make sure that the plan is made by somebody where if I fuck up, it's going to make me look bad and I'm going to disappoint the person. Right. So, and it's so funny because without that plan, like, for example, I could be running TRT right now, just normal, my regular fucking healthy phase. And I could not have a plan and I could just be complacent. Nothing's changing. I can literally change nothing and then just have a plan, which could be the exact same thing. And automatically my body's going to start responding. So the training and the mental aspect to push yourself is the best PED you can ever take that you're not actually taken inside you like by far yeah by far because at the end of the day listen the peds man for all those listening listen it's is it a tool of course it's a fucking tool but you can get the best tool from home depot it doesn't mean that house is gonna be built yeah unless you fucking actually work and do everything the right way man that's just how it is and that touch, yeah, you're right, Pat. And that touches on like what I was just saying a minute ago. Like, you know, if you can't diet down hard without the excess of hormones, you know, w- what makes you think that you're going to be able to do it with? Because, like we've all three said and agreed, it, it makes it worse. It makes that mental state when you're four weeks out and think you're peeing on the floor and in the bathroom worse. Yeah. It just does. Um, Cause we've all felt what it is without and with, and I mean, yeah. I can definitely attest the saying four weeks out natural with nothing when I was much younger versus four weeks out with the mental strength you need to power through those last 30 days it is much more intense with excess hormones because your hormones are already getting jacked up from low fats and low carbs and all the cardio. When you add in things like, like trend and all that, I mean, it, it makes it worse. You have to push yourself mentally harder. Or uh, like you're, you're already drained. You put in some more anti-estrogens. They crash your estrogen. Um, you go dry. Like you'll feel like your soul sucked out of you. Yep. you know, I think um, I th- that's a great point. And I honestly think that um, this might sound like really funny. I think people really just need to stop being like, you know, a, a bitch when it comes to it. Like, it's not easy what we do, um, but take yourself. And, out and it's not, and, it, and it's not made for everybody. No, and, no. And the thing no. is people need to realize like what you're doing is your own choice, right? Yes. You're choosing to punish yourself. So don't punish the people around you because yes. you're fucking miserable. And you're you're not going to, a lot of people gonna don't die. That. Yeah. You're not going to die. Yeah. Like you're really Correct. not going to die. Like if you think about it, our, the cavemen thousands of years ago, they lived through the freezing fucking cold and had to go hunt and kill things and eat it over a fire. You're going to be all right. It could be a lot yeah. worse. You're in a house right now. You're going to go to fucking lay in a bed. You're not laying in the snow to fall asleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. A so, lot of people think- are way more dramatic than they need to be. Uh, yeah. And that's why, that's what I found with this show with Big Cat, with how many people I've done it. Just the people who dropped out, I mean, they're great people, but when the pushing got tough, it just it cracks people it just is it is what it is and there's no shame in that because yeah. the, com- the competitive side of this is not for everybody you know but as long as you can you know you're aware of that then you're gonna be okay you know and like justin said you're not gonna die it, it's tough as shit when you're hungry but you're not gonna die you either are gonna do it or not and don't punish others just because oh, you're yeah. fucking hungry. I learned that the hard way the first few times. Yeah. Same right with me. And then like, like last year was like, even my wife said it. Nina was like, I can't even tell you're in prep. She was like, you're better right now. Than, and it was just such a stress-free environment. I had my gym in the backyard, you know. You weren't around people. That's what ended up yeah. happening. 
We just had moved back into our house after it got destroyed during COVID from the, the tree storm and all that. And mm-hmm. there was no stress pad. I was, it was, I was virtual because I was still working at the school. I had 50 clients. So I would get home at, you know, off the virtual at 11 a.m., do client work, walk in my backyard and come in. And I was done by 4 p.m. And there was no stress. Like you said, there was no people, nothing. It was like, so it was like that extra nap during the day, everything yeah. helped uplift the mood and, and made me feel more rested where I had that energy to go from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. and then go to bed. And it made a difference. But the difference that stress makes, too, is like nothing. if you see if you see Steve out in public, don't go talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> he won't know what to do and how to act. He might yeah. just fucking run away. <laughs> he'll, throw, he'll throw something at you. And What's run crazy away. is like, I love to talk. I'm very personable. You guys both know that. And I'll talk to anybody, but like, I don't know. I feel like the older I've gotten, I just hate leaving the house. <laughs> it's so weird. Like if I, like if I have to go to like Sam's club or BJ's, I'm like, I, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like just it's inst- been a month. Just, bro, <laughs> just Instacart everything, man. You know, Pat, listen, like, I just, I just used Instacart for the first time yesterday, and I realized I didn't order beef, so I used it again the same day. <laughs> but I just realized how convenient it is, bro. They just drop your shit in front of your house. Yes, and we, yeah. we buy the, I buy the same thing no matter what. So it's not like I have to shop for I just vegetables, I, chicken, I don't beef. I wrap my head around that. I'm in like, you I, know, I'll do it too. Great. And then I'll, I'll post it up and tag you in it. Man. But I'll be like, this is Pat's fault now. I literally don't leave. My, my car, my truck was in the shop the last two days. And yesterday, my dad goes, what are you going to do if you have to leave? And I go, dad, what are you, you uh, going to leave? I said, I haven't driven my truck since Sunday. What do you leave? Where, where the hell am I going? Like, I'll, I'll call Justin or like, never, I'll text you too. I'll be like, hey, you guys like yeah. in the store today, this and that? Because like, I'm not going to leave my house if I don't have to. <laughs> like, Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. Just, but now that I know I can Instacart things, but I do get enjoyment out of every two weeks going to sam's club picking out my my muffins like i don't want instacart to do that. i gotta pick my my bakery muffins on my own well with, with listen with me um my like going to the store to get my fucking quick groceries is so like i get so like frustrated because number one i don't have time to fucking just pull 45 minutes to go to the store yep. i can't bag anything now so i got this fucking <laughs> I know, of chicken <laughs> And this beef, and I'm trying to carry it like some fucking weirdo, like I'm a juggling clown at a fucking circus, right? Number two, everybody's looking at me like I'm the weirdo when they're the fucking ones walking around like they're going to die tomorrow. Like, what the... F- like, so I'm just done. Like, I just... And I see enough people all day long. Yeah. Love them. I love those people. They actually want to change. They want things to happen. But then, it, like, listen, it's weird because, like, like, speaking of that, so... When I'm in a gym, I see gym people, right? When I'm in a store all day long, I see people that still technically are gym people, but I want to change or life. When I go to a supermarket, I see the average people. And those fucking average people are scary, bro. They are, <laughs> they are like, it's unreal how unhealthy those yeah. people are. But they looking at me like I'm the fucking weirdo. Because yeah. I'm juggling chickens and beefs in my hands like a fucking clown in a circus and taking going to the register. And then I'm at the register and I'm scanning and every fucking fourth thing, uh, need assistance, need assistance. And I'm standing like a fucking like some asshole waiting for the guy to come, scan his thing. And I'm just like, bro, can you just bypass this so I can just fucking get this done and get out of here? <laughs> so Instacart everything going forward. I'm done with That's the supermarket. A I used to just when I because I wear shorts all year round. I used to just get calf compliments, like and I'm like, like you said from the average field, like what do you do for your calves? Is that I'm like, yeah, you don't trust me. You don't want this lifestyle. This is a lot of pain. No. This is a lot of agony. It's my, a lot of chin fall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my damn knees and my shoulders hurt every day. But now I just get beard beard questions, Justin. Oh, um, beard, beard, yeah. So the beard has has taken over the calf questions from the, the average people in, in Costco and Sam's Club. But uh, that's, that's it's, fucking great, man. Uh, it's very weird. People come up to me, just grown men. Like me and my dad were at Breaking oh, yeah. Benjamin. Two it's always ago. a grown man, bro. But dude, it's like, the weirdest thing. At Breaking Benjamin, me and my dad are there two months ago in Atlantic City. And I get grabbed on the shoulder 
and I'm like, I turn around, it's this grown man. And I'm like, do I know? Like, I was trying to think, like, maybe I know him. Like, shit, maybe it's a client. Like, I, he's like, dude, I, I'm sorry, but I got to ask, what do you do for that beer? And I'm like, oh my, my God. Dad, my dad's like, yeah, I'm going to go get a Diet Coke. <laughs> like, I don't want to be involved in this conversation. <laughs> like, whatever you guys got, whatever you two are doing on right now, I'm just going to move yeah, away like, from it. Fun and, and I'll be back. So I'm like, what do you mean? What do I do? He's like, dude, there's like, what do you put in that? Like to make it grow and so black. I'm like, I just wake up and do cardio. I shower. And that's it. Like, I don't, I don't do nothing. He's like, well, dude, I've been putting like this gross stuff in. Like, oh my God. And I'm like, I don't do anything. I don't put oil condition, nothing. I just wash it with shampoo. Cause I have no hair on here on my head. Yeah. And that's it. And I just go to bed. Like, I'm like, it's the, it's the weirdest thing. Like it just people well, not like, I'd say I'd rather have a conversation with that individual though than the yeah you know, a younger person who doesn't know how to talk because at least that person is like truly into <laughs> something yeah. that you have and wants to honestly learn like the younger kids man yeah. they don't know how to ask a question they're so awkward they don't know how to even they don't know how to say hi like i'll, I'll sure. be like even today, or they'll look down they'll just like so, look down so i'm walking i'm walk actually this happened today this is my biggest pet peeve i hate this shit so much when i hold, <laughs> when I hold a door for you and you don't acknowledge it just say thank you just acknowledge oh, like, yeah. the person literally just kept walking. And I literally, when they walk by me, I say, you're welcome. And they turn and they look like, yeah, I, yeah, you're welcome. I opened, I held the door for you. Like, <laughs> in, the stair, in the stairs, like a stairwell, like, you know, at the one gym I go to, the stair, at Giant Boys, yeah. um, the stairwell is kind of like, it's a little smaller. So I move to the side when I see someone coming up and I'm yeah, like, they all say, Thank yeah. You. They don't, if, can, oh my God, they don't acknowledge it. They just don't, I get so heated. I'm like, just say thank you for moving out of the way. Cause honestly, with all due respect, I'm a lot bigger and I'm coming down. So if I want to bump your shit, you're going to go, you're gonna go down. So you're welcome. You're welcome. You know? no, you're, you're right. It, it, like you said, Pat, too, the younger generation, they can't hold a conversation like how we are. It's yeah. pretty crazy. They're like heads down. They don't know. And to be honest with you, it's they, they can't make eye con. They can't make eye contact. It's technology. They don't know how to make eye contact. Yes, I, it's got to yes. be technology. So it's very easy. So if you want to just, all you have to do is just, <laughs> all you have to do is not say anything. You just keep looking directly at them, and they'll just be like, a, they'll just be like a puppy, and they just walk away. It's really crazy, like to see too, like within that four, like four to five year generational gap of like the difference like wh what happened <laughs> like yeah. you know, my honest theory is i just think that people that communicated and had social skills before covid kept them and if they weren't at that age before covid hit they didn't have a chance to like yeah there was them. social interaction and stuff but technology too justin like listen when i was bro nobody want nobody wants to come and talk anymore everybody just text message like people don't even really like think about it do you really feel like bothering with a phone call Half of the time when I it can bother be you when I text. hear something, you do, but you send me voice messages. You don't even call me anymore, Justin. I'm like, this fucker just sent me a minute voice message. Like, just call I me, prefer, dude. I prefer <laughs> phone call over text because a lot can get lost in translation. Like, I've had well, like Steve, you're like Steve, you're like 60, bro. I really am. You're, you're not wrong. Yeah. You're not even 30, but you're like you act like a 60 year old man. Going on like 59. <laughs> it's bad, dude. But uh, dude, I'm like I'm gonna be a dad in like six weeks. So it's like I feel like I'm right at that point where like you know I'm half in shape, half like in shape dad bod. Like I'll enjoy a burger <laughs> four times a week if I need, as long as the cholesterol and the blood work comes back right. <laughs> like, you know, and then and then I just help people get in shape. But um, but yeah, I am like sixty. You're not lying. It's bad, dude. It's really bad. <laughs> it's like I don't. I love social interaction and stuff, but I just don't like to leave the house. <laughs> like I just don't. Yeah. I don't have to though. Like if I had to, it'd be different. But like I just don't like. I don't even know where to go. There's been times where I just got in my truck and driven because I'm like I just need to get out. It's been like five days. I haven't left. Uh, I need to get out. <laughs> I'm like the talker. Like I'll talk with uh, with strangers for hours. Yeah. But when it comes to like my mom, 
or something. Like that. <laughs> That's I'm how I am. I'm I'm a yes and no. <laughs> I'm just a yes and no. But everybody else, full blown fucking conversations. <laughs> That's how I am. So. Yeah, it's the truth, man. It's but yeah, no, it's uh yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't like to leave. But if I have to, I do. But like I had to get new tires on my truck. I was at the I had to Uber to the fucking dealer today, the car shop, because no one could give me a ride at two o'clock um in the afternoon. And I'm like, what do I say to this guy? Like, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck. Like, guys like this is a random dude just picking me up. Like, yeah. what do I say? And then like he started asking me about bodybuilding. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, he's like, you want to sit in like the front? You're a big guy. And then he's like, do you compete this now? And we had like a full 35 minute conversation about That's bodybuilding. Good. Which was cool, you know, but like, like you said, I like to be social uh, when I have to be. Um, yeah. But I get, it, you know, the shows and stuff, it sucks. They're winding down, you know, being there and socializing with everybody is cool, you know, because like in the local area too, like Pat, like unless you have any events at the stores and such, which are always early in the year when it's warm. It's like, yeah, oh, we all hibernate in the area, <laughs> you know, like once November hits and all the shows are done. And then you see everybody again in May, you know, when they pick up. So it's cool to go like big cat. I'm looking forward to, you get to see everybody there and you get to reap the rewards of, of your clients and, and your hard work as a team. And you get to catch up with everybody. Like I said, you only see every couple months and you know, that it's, that's cool. And I like, I like going all of them and, and whatnot and, and doing all that. But, and then I just go back in my hermit hole. I agree. All right, guys. So on that note, all right, because once me, once Steve starts going, so Steve hasn't, Steve hasn't talked to anybody in like a fucking week, other than his <laughs> clients through email. So th- this dude can just have us here for five hours talking about everything. Next thing you know, he's going to be telling what he's wearing, what everything. But uh, no, guys, seriously, thank you so much for uh, jumping on. Um, everybody that's listening, um, you guys can check out Justin and Steve. Everything will be in the links. Um, in the bios and so forth on all the posts and uh guys thank you and have a good night all right pat thanks man man thank you guys. guys